हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल आवर कमिंग वीडियो इज ऑन थर्ड पार्ट ऑफ ऑटोमोटिव सिटिंग सिस्टम डिजाइन एंड सिटिंग सिस्टम रेगुलेशंस इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड स्कोप ऑफ वर्क एंड एक्टिविटीज इन्वॉल्व ड्यूरिंग वर्किंग इन सिटिंग सिस्टम डिजाइन और इन अ सिटिंग डोमेन ऑल्सो गोइंग टू लर्न द बेसिक प्लास्टिक पार्ट डिजाइन गाइडलाइंस इन दिस वीडियो ट्यूटोरियल वी आर ऑल्सो गोइंग टू सी हाउ फोम डिजाइन प्लास्टिक पार्ट डिजाइन शीट मेटल पार्ट डिजाइन एंड काइनेमेटिक सिम्युलेशन और काइनेमेटिक मोशन स्टडी बिकम्स रिक्वायर्ड ड्यूरिंग वर्किंग इन दिस डोमेन वी आर गोइंग टू सी द improved head restraint design for safety and compliance under FMVSS that means Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard and regulation is 202E during analysis of HRMD HRMD is head restraint measuring device so friends let's watch this video till the end and learn things in a practical way during working in this domain we have to required basic knowledge of foam designing parts like cushion pad backrest foam design headrest foam design arm rest foam design etc during foam designing parts like cushion pad backrest pad foam design which material we have to use it what is the material composition what is tdi mdi these are the technical terms what is its function selection of foam material how we can make foam cad model in any mechanical software what input data is required how to cross check received input styling a surface data etc all step by step guidelines already provided in earlier foam design video tutorial link is provided in the description box so please refer also we required the plastic part design knowledge to design various seat components like side valance of inboard outboard now what is inboard what is outboard already explained in earlier videos link provided in the description box for new view please refer earlier videos of part 1 and part 2 of automotive seating system design and regulations for better understanding of technical concepts need to design recliner cover ha handle suspension mat design etc before going to design any specific plastic part of seating system should have to know the basic thumb rules or you can say the basic guidelines for plastic part design now we are going to see like what should be the basic basic plastic part thickness will be preferred basically we know that part thickness is totally depend upon the function of part and its surrounding feasibility or surrounding data strengths and loading and unloading criteria and so many factors for seating system design we prefer plastic part thickness would be 2.2 mm to 3 mm max second point now we are going to see the clearance required between the plastic part and sheet metal part as per the design for assembly and design for manufacturing both the designing concepts we are following during the designing of plastic parts so with reference to that during assembly point of view the joint between the plastic and metal allows the plastic part to expand without the expansion of metal part we are considering that the sheet metal is a structural part and plastic part laying on it and screwing on it also we are considering the noise reduction due to the vibration so mostly providing 6 mm clearance in between the plastic and sheet metal part during seat design have to consider the moving metal part on plastic part like seat track is moving metal and plastic part fixed on it so during designing also need to provide 6 mm clearance between it if we are fixing plastic part on fixed plastic then 0.5 mm required for clearance sometimes as for the customer uh, requirement they will provide the master sections or gap and flush analysis chart also according to their requirement we should have to maintain fifth point in fixed plastic part to the moving plastic part mostly recommended 3 mm clearance this in the image sixth guideline is the in case of fixed plastic part to the fixed foam part please see the image on the screen we overlap forcefully or you can say the 
crushed 6 mm in case of high density foam there are two various types of foams we are using in sitting that is the high density and the low density high density foam we are used for the bolster we have already seen in previous video tutorial i have provided the link please refer while in low density foam we provide 8 mm overlap foam on it you can see in the image when we are fixing plastic part with carpet then 3 mm crush we can provide for any plastic part design like ece r21 ece is the economic commission for euro regulation 21 recommended that minimum 3.5 mm radius required and for the plastic and sheet metal parts so during designing of parts we mostly prefer the 6 mm radius during designing of a sitting system parts that means minimum 3.5 mm to 6 mm we can maintain next guideline according to the dfm design for manufacturing plastic component ejection direction will be clear so during analysis of any input style data need to cross check its graft for ejection point of view mostly providing minimum 5 degree to 7 degree graft to the A surface which is easy for the ejection point of view and if any graining grain structure will be considered then draft angle will become change or it will be updated according to the surface area of graining structure and its depth next guideline about the design of a clip tower or dog house in sitting system designing we should have to maintain the 3 degree of draft minimum and we should have to maintain the 3 degree draft you can see in the image and 40 percent of the maintain wall thickness at the bottom which is highlighted in the image on the screen during designing of sheet metal parts like mounting bracket cushion pan bracket cross member lumbar support wires headrest sleeves etc during sheet metal part design need to know the thumb rules about the sheet metal like material selection material selection criteria is also important during the consideration of load calculation according to the yield strength of material and its thicknesses you can get the sheet metal material selection video tutorial in the description box for more details in kinematic study we are going to focus on kinematic simulation of a seat like in seat there is a track movement front and rear movement of a track that should have to understand height adjuster movement backrest movement in structural seat kinematic simulation we have to see track movement height adjuster movement backrest movement and cushion pan adjustment this simulation point of view or kinematic simulation we should have to understand about the structural seat point of view related to the headrest also we should have to understand the kinematic simulation of headrest length adjustment and headrest position changing these are the kinematic simulation point of view we should have to understand their measurements and their values now we are going to focus on the hrmd that is head restraint measuring device fm VSS that is the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard regulation number is 202 which governs head restraint. The head restraint position is measured using a head restraint measurement device that is called as the HRMD. You can see in the image the HRMD head form is mounted on the H point machine. A weighted mannequin that is widely used for measuring automotive seat with the seat adjusted so that the torso angle of mannequin is 25 degree off of vertical the head of the hrmd is leveled and probe is moved reward from the head of the mannequin to measure the head restraint position fmvss 202r requires that the distance between the back of the hrmd head from the head restraint a dimension termed as a back set and it should not be more than 55 millimeters the purpose of the back set requirement is to reduce the distance between the occupant's head and the head restraint the simulation shows that due to decrease of the length whiplash associated disorders in rear impact crash due to the length reduction in between the mannequin and the headrest in case of a rear impact crash the occupant's safety will be and the occupants becomes more safe now we are going to see which physical tests are required during the setting system design first is the structural and regulation point of view we should have to take 
or conduct the test. Then trim test, durability test, sled test, noise and vibration test. All these physical tests we should have to conduct or complete the regulation of the standards. Now we are going to see the regulations that is FMVSS Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards and other is the ECE Economic Commission of Europe. Here we can see that FMVSS 201 equivalent to the ECER 21 that regulation it is the regulation of the occupant protection in interior impact during the impact of the vehicles the occupant protection is necessary so this regulation is we have to follow then next is the 201 fmvss 202 and it is also equivalent to the eCER 17 it is the head restraint strength the further is the fmvss 207 it is equivalent to the eCER 14 it is the sitting system so we have to go through the complete fmvss regulations. Now friends, now we are going to see the sitting system elements or you can say the seat components. First point is the seat track or adjuster. You can see in the image it is on the below side of the cushion so that the occupant or the operator he can adjust the seat in the forward go through the complete FMVSS regulations. Now friends, now we are going to see the sitting system elements or you can say the seat components. First point is the seat track or adjuster. You can see in the image it is on the below side of the cushion so that the occupant or the operator he can adjust the seat in the forward and rear rearward forward and rear front and back side second is the recliner you can see here in the image recliner is a standard parts during the designing of the system we are calculated the axial and shear forces according to that we can have to decide the recliner and it comes in the it is the bought out part and it comes from the supplier so we have to choose very recliner standards parts according to the seats metal and mechanisms recliner a recliner is a critical to the seat system performance a recliner must be designed to withstand loads applied during the typical and non-typical operations recliner are the standard parts during designing of the sitting system at that time recliner plays an important role if the comfortable point of recliner needs to change something design a recliner must be designed to withstand loads applied during the typical and non-typical operations for bold design of the recliner axial forces and shear forces calculated and according to that length of bolt will becomes decide or select due to this will need to change the bolt size or sometimes the part of the seat or any other structure there are chances to select the recliner of a standard capacity from the supplier transfer load directly to the adjuster and ultimately to the vehicle floor types includes single sided and dual sided recliner third is the back frame you can see the it is a tube like structure and at the center it is little bit pinched so that for head restrainer it is welded cushioning frame cushioning frame also providing a high strength because it is also a structural part arm rest height adjuster you can see in the image next is the lumbar system you can see in the image it is the lumbar system so that when operating operator or occupant sit on the lying on the seat at that time he can just adjust his back and feel the comfort cushion is the trim trimmed cushion third is the fabric you can see in the image on the screen fourth is the plastic ornamentation that is the plastic part suspension you can see in the image sixth one is the foam below the foam there are 
is providing the suspension head retainer side airbag you can see and retainer these are the basic elements of the sitting system now we will see in details back frame now we are going to see the back frame you can see there are five different types of back frames first is the tubular here you can see the structure of that just like you and it is welded to the other parts for providing the strength second is the stamp in that stamp back frame you can see that the thickness of that plate is not too much but after providing the stamping operations it having the strength of that material becomes increased third is the cast you can see the casting back frame having the high strength fourth is the made up of from the composite material so it is the composite back frame and fifth one is the aluminium extrusion we can see here in the image the push cushion frames the first is the stamp cushion frame and second one is the cast magnesium cushion frame both are from the structural point of view the non structural point of view third you can see that that is the compression molded cushion frame and fourth one is the blow molded cushion frame head retainer there are four different types of head retainers in the market First type is the fixed type the head retainer it is fixed to the fixed to the seat back second type is the integrated type in integrated type the mechanical and electric it is attached it is integrated third type is the two way type. that means that head retainer you can just remove it and put from the other way that is the two way fourth one is the four way it is a very special case folded out of way hide away added side support you can see in the image